Oh, welcome back Wolf Scouts for Activity 7. Local maps, animals, and walking like animals. Hempill, Camino Real, Blanco Vista Elementary, and all others are welcome. For more fun activities at home, visit our YouTube channel, Sacred Springs Scout Reach. Please join me in the Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law. To help other people at all times. To keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Please join me in the Scout law. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. A scout is obedient. A scout follows the rules of his family, school, and troop. He obeys the law of his community and country. If he thinks these rules and laws are unfair, he tries to have them changed in an orderly manner rather than disobeying them. A scout is obedient. Show the Cub Scout sign. Tell what it means. Make the sign with your right hand. Hold your arm straight up. The two raised fingers stand for the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. The fingers look like the sharp ears of the wolf, ready to listen to Okela. Remember that Akela means good leader to a Cub Scout. Your mother or father or guardian is Akela. So is your Cub Master or your den leader. At school, your teacher is Akela. Say the Cub Scout motto. Tell what it means. The Cub Scout motto is do your best. A motto is a guiding principle and a rule for living. Do your best means trying your hardest, not just a little bit. Do your best all the time. Do your best in school and at home. Do your best when you play a game and help your team. Do your best as you work on your rank adventures. I like scouting because it gives me an opportunity to get out and hang out with my friends. Requirement 3. While on a den or family outing, identify four different types of animals. Explain how you identify them. Instead of saying, I saw a butterfly, you can say, I saw a monarch butterfly with orange and black wings. In learning to identify a monarch butterfly, you might also learn that monarchs, like many birds, fly south in the fall and north in the spring. In fact, Monarchs can migrate more than 2,500 miles a year. Requirement 7. Name two birds, two insects, and two other animals that live in your area. Explain how you identified them. Whether you live in a city, in a suburb, on a farm, by the ocean, are in the mountains, birds, bugs, and other animals live there too. What kind of creatures live near you? With your parents or guardian's permission, go to the library or on the internet and find information about your local wildlife. Write down two types of birds, two insects, and two other animals that live near you. Birds. Do the birds that you pick live near you all the time, or do they migrate or travel there for part of the year? What do they eat? What kinds of trees or bushes do they like to nest in? Do both the male and female help build the nest and raise their young? Insects. Are there bees, wasps, ants, flies, roaches, beetles, or butterflies near you? Bugs are fascinating creatures. 
Did you know that bees can fly up to 60 miles a day to gather food? Or that ants can lift more than 50 times their own weight? What did you find out about the two insects that you chose? Other animals. Some wild animals have figured out how to live around people. Coyotes, foxes, possums, raccoons, squirrels, rabbits, deer, and other species of animals may be close by. What kinds of animals live near you? Tell how the animals you studied can be identified. Share what you found out with your den leader or family. Write down the two birds, two insects, and two other animals you learned about that live in your area. Birds, insects, other animals. Hi Scouts, welcome to the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium in Dubuque, Iowa. We're part museum, part science center, and part aquarium. My name's Jennifer, and today we are going to go learn about some of the awesome habitats found up and down the Mississippi River. Let's go! This is our American kestrel. I don't know if you just heard him twitter there. It's pretty cute. Kestrels are found up and down the Mississippi River. They're one of our most common falcons here in North America. And falcons are what we consider a migratory bird. So what that means is that falcons have one part of the country where they like to spend their breeding season, where they have their babies, and they actually move to a different part of the country for the winter, primarily so that they can find food. Birds move in response to food availability. In North America, we have four main highways that birds use to move from one point to another. Along the Mississippi River, we are part of the Mississippi Flyway. Approximately 325 different species use this flyway to move from their breeding grounds to their wintering grounds. Our Mississippi Flyway makes up a massive area. It's going to include Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, the Midwestern states, but it actually extends all the way from Alaska and Northern Canada down into the Gulf of Mexico. So the birds that are using this highway to move from breeding grounds to wintering grounds, they actually will travel that whole distance and sometimes even end up into South America. Birds, as they're migrating, they're looking for great spots where they can stop, they can rest, they can spend an evening kind of conserving energy, and more importantly, all these little stopping grounds up and down the Mississippi River provide a lot of animals great spots where they can raise their family, where they can hunt their dinner. So we're going to examine those habitats. Within each habitat, there are a series of plants and animals that create a food chain. We group those plants and animals into three main categories. Producers, which are plants. Consumers, which are the animals that eat things like other animals or plants. And detritivores, which eat all of the dead things. Let's go meet a few of them now. The base of our food chain is the producer. The producer is a plant that uses the sunlight to make food. Behind me are some great examples of producers, such as this big blue stem grass. I have here an eastern box turtle. This is an example of a consumer. This particular animal loves to eat things like plants and occasionally a large bug. Like most consumers, it's gonna be eating plants and other animals. I am holding a crayfish. This is a great example of one of those animals that we call a detritivore. What that means is this animal goes around and eats dead things from the bottom of the river or those wetlands. And that helps actually recycle the nutrients back into the habitat so that our producers or our plants can grow up big and tall and start the whole cycle over again. Here we are at our backwater marsh exhibit. This exhibit actually represents something like a wetland here along the Mississippi River. These habitats are great spots for spotting migratory birds such as waterfowl. Approximately 40% of North American ducks, swans, geese actually use the Mississippi Flyway to move from point A to point B each year. These are areas that are gonna have high diversity of animals, high diversity of plants, but they also help us out as people. 
Habitats like a backwater marsh or a wetland are great at improving water quality of our river systems. These habitats act like a giant sponge. So as those floodwaters come in, that sponge of the wetland can slowly release those waters into the main channel, helping control flood levels over time. The plant roots also actually act as a filter. So as things like pollutants of heavy metals, phosphates, or nitrates come into the system, those plants actually filter it out, and as the water leaves, it's in better condition than when it arrived. This gives a lot of animals great spots to feed, great spots to raise their families. If you look behind me, you'll notice that there's some fallen trees. Places like that are great habitats for fish and turtles and birds to actually have their nests and raise their offspring. When you think of things like the river and the wetlands, humans, we influence them a lot by what we put into our environment. Things like pesticides or rodent poison can actually have a big impact on animals like this barn owl. The barn owl eats about 1,000 mice a year in the wild. So if you are using a rodent poison in your home, you actually could be making the owl sick instead of a rodent. So by being smart about what we put into the environment, we can help a lot of our animals up and down the Mississippi Flyway. Thanks for joining us today at the National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium in Dubuque, Iowa. Next time you're in town, we would love to show you around campus. In the meantime, adventure on. Requirement eight, draw a map of an area near where you live using common map symbols. Show which direction is north on your map. You may want to include a key such as this with a park, railroad tracks, road, house, school, hospital. Important information for you to know. Where you live, parents' phone number. Requirement five, do at least two of the following. Frog leap, inchworm walk, kangaroo hop, or crab walk. Walking like different animals lets you use your muscles in different ways. These are fun exercises to try with your den members or family. They will also help you move quickly, improve your balance, and get stronger. Hop to it, Woof. Here are some samples of a frog leap, inchworm walk, kangaroo hop, and a crab walk. Join us next time for Activity 8, an obstacle course and fitness. If you are interested in joining a pack near you, Visit beascout.scouting.org.